Who exactly do I have on the phone right now? This is Kevin Van Buren. Johnny, the drummer. Carter. Got all three of you guys. Appreciate you guys calling in. And I should point out, first things first, um, I, I found out about you guys um, a long time ago. I really, I've been up here for almost seven years now. And I've been in bands you know, my whole life. I mean, honestly, going on, I don't even know, 20 years, I guess, playing drums professionally, I guess, if you call professionally. Um, but uh, it's funny because... I really started a couple of years ago to really get out of music. Like I really wasn't really getting into anything new and I felt like everything people sent me just really rubbed me the wrong way or I just wasn't into it. You know, sometimes you get too close to it. I'm sure as you guys know, you're musicians in bands and you get too close to it yeah. and, and it kind of starts to get old. But so you guys, one day I was cruising on Instagram and uh, it popped up, I guess a sponsored ad and it was your song Vagabond. And uh, I immediately was was completely thrilled when I saw you guys. I was like, these guys are young. This this is a sound. And uh, it's funny because I don't know if you guys even know him, but the reason I saw that is because there was one mutual follower. is my buddy, Nate Perry, who plays in the band The Other L.A. Do you guys know him? No, I don't. Totally random. I love that. I didn't know if he was like your friend or what. That's really cool. No. Oh, uh, that's crazy. So yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah. So it, it popped up because of the mutual follow. I guess so. Yeah. Either, either it was like maybe I don't know how of those sponsored ads work but i guess maybe it popped up because of that because whenever i saw the video it said underneath it nate perry follows and so he's got pretty oh, good taste wow. in music and we're pretty good friends and so i immediately checked out your page but um but it's great stuff and you guys you guys are really young how old are you guys i'm 18 i'm the singer i'm the drummer i'm 18 i'm bass i'm 15 i think that's amazing one thing that's cool with that is you guys have your whole lives ahead of you you know what i mean there's only there's only time in front of you guys and you guys are already so much further ahead i would never want you to hear the band i was in when i was 15 or 18 <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and honestly too one of the things about you guys um, I, I referenced um when i played vagabond the first time which we're going to play here in a second um i referenced uh silver chairs freak show record are you guys into silver chair at all or that era of silver chair no but i listened to it and i can see how you like think that we sound alike yeah it was i never even really heard of them but yeah when i listened to it i did hear the, um, yeah. the references yeah. especially with the the music side yeah. of it and that's even cooler i mean it's totally it's just totally who you guys are and i love that and and growing up in the 90s um silver chair really messed up my mentality because i was around maybe like 15 whenever they were like the freak show big era and it really bothered me because silver chair was you know platinum and worldwide famous by the time they were 15 so i always felt this pressure like i've got to be as big as silver chair i'm already 16 it's too late it's just too late <laughs> so it's one of those bands like growing up with you know but i'm a massive fan of them and i'm a massive fan of what you guys do and tell me how did you guys how did drift away become a band how did you guys get this band going we uh we started when we were Super, super young. I, me and the uh, drummer, Johnny, we met, what was it, like ninth grade? Yeah, we met in like ninth grade, and my neighbor had you over at his house, and uh, I told him that I played guitar and stuff like that, so you yeah. came over, and we started jamming every day and stuff like that, and then we were in a cover band for a while, and then we finally started playing just in a regular band and stuff. Yeah, I was, I was friends with this, um, just this other kid. He, um, I was good friends with him for a long time, and we were hanging out literally like every single weekend, every day. And then I met uh, Johnny. And, and you were at my house every day. Yeah, we were into the same music. It was just a switch yeah. over one day to the next. And it's so refreshing to me because I, you know, I live in here. I love Nashville, Tennessee. Don't get me wrong. I've been here for a decade, and I love it. But a lot of bands audition. They do the auditioning thing, and I've always been a fan because I come from St. Louis originally where my, my band still lives. And um, I, I come from the world of you guys, you know, meeting somebody and jamming in the garage and, and being friends and and living that band. And to me, that's that's what made rock and roll so great, what made bands so great. And your guys' sound is is really developed, um, particularly the song Vagabond. Th those lyrics, those are some heavy lyrics, man. Where do those lyrics come from? For for being so young, those those are some lyrics of a man that is very wise beyond his years. I will say that. <laughs> I mean, that came from a friend of mine. He was... Uh... From a really young age, he always had it pretty rough. He never had an actual home to go to or nothing. Was always bouncing around from friend's house to friend's house. So being around that was pretty emotional. Being able to actually see that kid had to go through. So that that inspired that song for me. Is he a big fan of the song, or does he not know that it's about him? He does not know that it's about him. That's that's not something I really wanted to reveal to him. <laughs> no, I feel that man. I feel that. And I guess too. I mean, how much how much touring have you guys done in Drift Away? Have you guys just played like regional and stuff? Have you done any tours? We've done absolutely no touring we're really hoping to soon just little house parties little yeah. benefits little bars stuff like that just yeah just local stuff yeah. we haven't we haven't left like 
probably within a half hour. Of, yeah. Is it a pretty sick house party scene up there? Um, no. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. no. I've never yeah, played we're... a cool house party. I have so many friends who rave about these house parties. And like when I was coming up, I would play house parties. I feel like nobody watched us. They just like go outside <laughs> or yeah. wherever the keg was at, you know? <laughs> no, that, that would definitely be cool. Like an actual house party. Yeah, like, like, want to, I don't know. Kids are yeah, I don't know how we haven't. And obviously I don't, I don't want to get into the pandemic stuff because I feel like that's been talked about till everyone's blue in the face and it just drives everyone insane yeah. at this point. But, um, but it is interesting with you guys because most of my guests come on the show and the number one thing they talk about is how different 2020 has been for them because they can't tour. But for you guys, I guess you really haven't really skipped a beat since you really weren't touring. What have you guys kept yourselves busy with doing in this time whenever you can't really play shows or are you playing some shows up there? We are not playing any shows right now, but we're actually, um, we're putting a lot of work into uh, hopefully a debut album coming out not too long to keep the music going. So that's kind of the main focus right now is practicing a lot too. Practicing yeah. and just building, starting to get new songs going for the for the next album or EP, whatever we decide to release. Where do you guys record at? Do you guys record your own stuff? Or do you have a studio you hold up in up there? Um, no, we record at uh, Not a Recording. It's in Montgomery, New York. He's a he's an awesome guy. We yeah, really he did he did a good job on yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, he did great for us. He's an awesome guy. Oh, I love that. It's nice to have a place you can go back to and, and get a producer that gets your sound. It's so important. A lot yeah, of people exactly. yeah. I love it. Talking to Drift Away on Nashville's Rock Station 1029 The Buzz. But yeah, one thing I think too with you guys, it's interesting because uh, in high school I was in a band. And then when the band ended, um, I went on and had, you know, I found like a college band. Um, you guys, I mean, I assume, are, are you guys in college now? Are you guys still in high school or? No, we're, we're not. Me and Johnny here, we are. Uh, we graduated. Yeah, we graduated, but the bass player Carter, he's only 15. So he's um, still. I'm still a sophomore. He's still going through, but we have, um, we have jobs. Yeah, we work and play Without in the band. college, yeah. Yeah. My dad owns a business and stuff and Johnny works with me sometimes. So we, we work with that, but. College was never something that was yeah. we're super into. It. And our, our parents really support us, too. So they support yeah. the fact that we're playing music and working at the same time. So. Yeah, they can, they can see the benefits that, yeah. that, so that important. music has on. I went to community college uh, just to appease my mom. But um, my parents were like that, too. My parents were always like, you know, my dad owned an HVAC shop. So the time I was 14, I was working in the sheet metal shop with him. And uh, But he was always, you're, you know, you're right. As long as, long as you see benefits and you see like there's different levels of things achieving i'll never forget um my dad was uh, i was still living at home when my very first band got a deal with mtv i was i think i was like 19 oh wow and uh, it was it was a big deal for us at the time pretty decent amount of money for being 19 too but but just to get on mtv was a big deal and uh i'll never forget my dad was like that was the when he really i think realized like oh okay this could actually be a thing and i think that parents you know parents that are supportive are priceless man because there's a lot of them that aren't it's kind of crazy yeah. yeah, they are. The whole college thing, is, it can be pretty forced nowadays, even if you have oh, yeah. any other routes to stuff. Yeah, and then a lot of those degrees don't even pay off. I mean, I have so many friends who were going to Belmont, and they graduated and got really sick jobs at like William Morris and and Red Light and all these different agencies, and now they're all laid off and probably not coming back. So it's when you see that, it's like, yeah, man, you know, yeah. colleges. Like, I didn't go to college for radio. I just kind of fell into this, and I have a lot of friends who went to school for uh, broadcasting, and they all hate me because they can't get a job. <laughs> yeah. Watching you succeed. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, I mean, I, I, I did the backwards thing. I, did, I joined a band, and then the station had played the band at some point, so that's how I got the job. That's what cool. are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? Are you guys going to be, because like, obviously every year I count down on the Thanksgiving buzzkill, things that, like five things that suck about Thanksgiving. Uh, obviously this year a lot of people aren't having Thanksgiving. I'm going to go home probably to see my family, but um, what are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? We're, we're going to our, um, for my family, we're going to our sister's house, and we're just doing just very normal Thanksgiving stuff there, nothing crazy, just... Just the typical dinner and hanging out and stuff like that. Yeah, and same with me. Not a lot of family around and stuff because everybody's kind of trying to keep safe with the virus and stuff. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I don't even think we mentioned it at the beginning, but Carter, the bass player, is, is my brother. So we're, we're oh, doing, right on. doing okay. the same thing. for brothers in, a, brothers in a band. Is there any drama with that or you guys get along really well? It's a lot of drama. <laughs> <laughs> when we practice, they argue all the time. Constant. Yeah, not, 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 Nothing like serious, but just just, just typical brother <laughs> arguments. Yeah. <laughs> hey, just look at it this way, man. It's like an Alex and Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I feel like yeah, it's, I feel like sometimes brothers can can bring the most. Like there can be an intensity, but there can be a really positive. Like you know each other like no one else. I will say this though: I played in a band for six years with a married couple. Never again. Never again. Oh yeah, that must <laughs> have been married couple. <laughs> well, they would fight the entire because we weren't. This was after Cavo, so we weren't on a bus. And so we were in a van, you know, and, and um, they would fight all day. And then we get to like the radio interview 
and they would ask, you know, um, how is the road? And they'd be like, oh, it's great. It's like a honeymoon every day. And they'd ask me, but I was sworn to secrecy. I wasn't allowed to say how miserable it was. So I had to be like, oh, it's great. It's great. <laughs> but it was definitely not. Well, one thing I do with uh, bands when they come on the show, boys, is I play something called the five random question game. Are you guys down to play this game? Definitely. Sure. Yeah. yeah. There's no right answers, no wrong answers. Question number one on the local buzz would drift away. What is one thing you hate about Thanksgiving? Since this is the Thanksgiving buzzkill, what's something about the holiday you just don't like? I'm going to get a lot of hate on this, but for me, it's the turkey. I've never been, been yeah, a big fan of turkey. Know. Yeah, I'll be okay. honest with you. Question number two on the local buzz would drift away. Since you guys are younger guys, the Foo Fighters or Nirvana, who do you prefer? Oh, my gosh. I like the Foo Fighters uh, better. Mm, I got to say I Nirvana, love them both. I mean, N Nirvana's just been too much of an influence for me. It's yeah. got to be Nirvana, but... Probably song for song, it's, it's probably Foo Fighters. And Dave Grohl is like the one who inspired me to start drumming and stuff like, and so I gotta say, oh nice, I gotta say Nirvana. Yeah, Dave's an absolute yeah. influence. So yeah. oh yeah, one hundred percent. Love Dave as a guy. I love that. I love that you guys are influenced by Nirvana too, because I think it's one of those bands that it's like essential. It's almost like kids growing up in the '90s being influenced by Led Zeppelin. Like it's just you, if you listen to Nirvana, exactly. you, just, you yeah. just get it, you know. And Dave Grohl's the nicest dude alive, which is funny because he's such a rock star. You know what I mean? He doesn't have to be, and he's the nicest guy alive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Question number three would drift away. Would you guys rather be the richest band in the world or the most respected band in the world? Rich. Yeah, definitely respected for me. Really? I think respected. I say too. richest. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And for me, it's. It's, it's more about, um, I'm honestly looking forward more to going on tour and stuff and just being able to see the world and have people enjoy the music. Absolutely. I feel like that's kind of what it's all about these days because like the days of making millions in, in bands, it still happens, but it, it's definitely getting harder. So I feel like it's kind of weeding out the people that were in, like maybe some of the people that were joining for the wrong reasons, you know? Yeah, Question, number four. Yeah. Yeah. Question number four, we're drift away. Harry Styles wore a dress and everybody apparently freaked out about it. So Harry Styles wearing a dress is shocking and brave or who cares? I'd uh, say it's pretty shocking and brave. Yeah, I guess, because he's yeah. like a huge pop singer, and then yeah, he goes exactly. ahead and does that. and get a lot of yeah. backlash. And, and it's funny because he's like the most handsome dude ever, and all the people that are mad about it, I think, are just jealous. <laughs> They're just jealous. Yeah. <laughs> the final question, number five, would drift away on the local buzz. You guys can have your dream tour. We're talking 65 dates, direct support for any band, alive or dead in the entire world. But... In order to get this tour, when you get back from the tour, for a living, you have to drive a pedal tavern down on Broadway in Nashville, Tennessee for an entire summer. Would you take the tour? Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> well, yeah, I feel like if you're in it for the music, that's kind of a given. I've had people before, one guy one time said no, and I was like dumbfounded. I was like, wow, okay. All right, man. <laughs> well, Drift Away, I appreciate you guys calling in, man. And uh, when it, once, all this stuff, once all this stuff gets back to normal and shows can get back to the regular life and stuff, I'd love if you guys would come down to Nashville and be cool to get you guys on a show and be cool to like have you guys come in and hang out, maybe play live in the studio like we used to in the good old days. I would love that. That'd be yeah, awesome. Definitely. Thank